So we're going to start off with our high polygon count head. Um, as you can see here, I already have some layers set up for you guys. I have the outline of the head and the bisection. Um, I label where the nose, the brow ridge, um, and the chin are. Um, and from there, it's up to you guys to lay down all of the lines that you may feel that you need um, for structure. And granted, these structure lines aren't always necessary. Um, you can just go directly into with the paints. I have two layers, one for pencils and one for paints. Um, but it all depends on your preference. So here I have selected um, a dry media pencil. It is called um, Happy HB. Um, but you can choose any pencil that you want. I recommend staying out of the default section. Um, I think some of the best stuff in Photoshop would be some of the Kyle brushes. So you'll always see his name attached to them. I would highly recommend once we get to the painting phase that you um, also use his uh, it's called a wet blender um, in order to mix colors together. I think it's one of the easiest, uh, more elegant ways. It looks very textured and very natural. And at this point in the art, I feel like I have enough structure set down. Um, so I have lowered the opacity on my line layer. Now I'm coming in with um, color matching. And I'm doing this by hand. So granted, all the colors won't be exactly accurate but you'll see in a bit um, when it comes time for me to change colors. What I'm doing is I'm looking at that window and comparing it to what's already there. Yep, I'm using the mouse and dragging it back and forth um, to look at the relationships between the colors. And this is all with the exact same brush. Um, this continues to be the, um, the Happy HB. Um, I've just increased its size so it resembles more of like a paintbrush. And what I'll be doing is as I lay down color foundations for the different planes, I'm also color picking from the stuff that I've already laid down and tweaking it slightly. Um, I chose um, this low poly figure with two different light setups. Um, one a cool colored light and one a warm colored light and I'm doing it all on a head that is a base gray um, so that you can see where uh, different styles of light fall and happen to alter the head um, and one of the uh, interesting things about a study like this is that you start to see that like there isn't much of a difference between a lot of the grays um, and in order to make the figure look more realistic as you change the colors it'll become more of like a slight tweak um, maybe just like a little bit, a, the tiniest smidge more red or the tiniest bit more blue. Um, and it's those colors in proximity to each other um, really affect, like in this part of the temple, I added just the slightest bit of red and then this, um, I lightened it for the top plane and then I made it a, a little bit more dark for the forehead slope. Um, and there are tiny little changes that go a long way. Um, a lot of times issues for beginning digital artists is that because we have this like palette of millions of different colors, we like to go a little bit um, hog wild with it and sometimes get carried away. When in reality, the relationship between these colors are much more gradual than you would expect. So I'm picking up little bits of um, red gray and blue gray and dropping them. <coughs> and since by this point, I pretty much eliminated the use of the um, pencil lines, I've completely cut them out. Um, it's all about sharpening the blurry color blobs that we already have in place. And so here I am using the wet blender to add in the um, parts of like neon blue that I had struck into the um, side planes of the head. And we're gonna go through and do a lot of blending everywhere. And this is the push and pull of digital painting is that you do a little bit of work and then you undermine all of the work that you just did by blending it together with other stuff. And then you go over that with some sharper lines to really clean things up.